Hello everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to take a look at digital scales and what makes them tick and some of the similar functionality between scales. So let's dive right in. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. here is an OHAS digital scale. OHAS is a very well-known brand and their scales come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a typical bench top scale that has got an AC adapter and it's got alkaline batteries underneath. Some of the functionality of the scale, there are leveling feet around the corners and you see right here there's a leveling bubble. So you can zero your scale before you take your measurements. Front control panel are membrane buttons. And one thing that you should note about all these scales is that they always have their maximum rating someplace on the label. Either it's on the back, usually on the front. This particular scale is rated at 8,100 grams, which is just over eight kilograms. So this is a pretty hefty little guy. On top of the scale, you have a platter. They're almost always removable. Underneath that, is a platter adapter and here we are down to the meat and taters of the scale. Once we remove this plate we're down by the load cell. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over take out these batteries. So one of the problems that we constantly have with scales is that the users tend to leave the batteries in them over a long period of time and if you're running your scale off an AC adapter there's no sense in having batteries in it at all. But here we are. You can see how the leveling feet function. These ones here are hiding the fasteners which hold the whole scale together. One of the other common things that we have to deal with is that users tend to lose or break the leveling feet. So if you're ever turning in a scale because something's broke on it, try and keep the feet. You'll need them later. All right, looks to me like I have some torques. First guess. I love that. Alright, save all these fasteners. As you've seen, this scale had an error code on it, which is probably why I found it in the disposal bin today. So we're going to take a look at the load cell and see. Maybe we can figure out what's going on with that error code. Maybe we can fix it and get the scale back up and going. As you can tell, it's not that old of a scale. All right, I've got all four of the fasteners out. It looks like there's some clips in the front, so that means it's gonna hinge from the rear. And there it is. Got one ribbon cable that joins the control panel to the control board. All right, let's see, I have one Power input output board. Is it power and input output? No, it's just input output. So there is a serial port on the back of this guy, which means you might be able to have accessories like printers, or you might be able to take the serial data stream out and incorporate it into other applications. So that's my I.O. cable. Here is my DC adapter and you can see it also ties into the battery all in one plug that's very efficient all right, let's take the shield off come on 
I have never taken one of these scales apart, guys, so please forgive me if something breaks. <laughs> All right. That's an interesting shield. I don't know if that is used for shielding the measuring components. I would assume so. Since we're dealing with such minute values here on this load cell, which that is what we're dealing with. I'm gonna pull this load cell out so we can see it and then I'll explain to you guys what a load cell is. Okay, I've got my cables here. <laughs> yes, I'm not using Torx, I understand that. Right off the bat, I do not see any physical damage that would have caused an error code. So maybe by putting this all back together, I might solve that problem. Body off to the side so we can talk about the meat and taters of the scale all right this this is a load cell and it works on a very simple principle let me pull this top part off so we can get a better look That is on there tight too. Let me tell you. Wow. Okay. As you can see that this piece here is just an adapter. This cone fits nicely up into the platter. That's all it is. Alright, so these ones here are apparently bump stops. So we've got bottom bump stops and top bump stops for whatever reason. Probably because these scales go through a lot. There we go. interesting that they put a circuit board on the load cell itself. That's probably why OHA scales are so accurate because they want to place the component that does the measurement as close to the analog device that creates the signal. So there we go. It's got your limiting screws. I'm definitely not going to touch those for their adjustments. This, this is a load cell. And what we have up here, yes, this is a fully functioning one too. So what we have here, these are strain gauges. See here, 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 and here. And you see how it's got that dog bone. Because as you place a weight on one side and the other side is anchored down, what it does is it creates a compression on one side and an expansion on the other side. And on the opposite side of the load cell, you get expansion and contraction, compression rather. So you have four points of measurement, which give you a very stable reading and a lot of resolution. Now, these load cells use a circuit called a Wheatstone bridge. And what you're doing is you're actually balancing out adjacent corners for expansion and compression. And you can actually see, let's take a look up here. The camera picks it up. Come on. There's little grinding marks inside right here. Tiny little grinding marks. Because what they did is they removed some material here and here to bring it within its calibrated value. That's actually really interesting. It's a sloppy way of doing it, but that's definitely a sure way. Because what happens is, as you add 
tension on one side and you get compression and you get expansion, well, that's going to change voltage measurements. These are going to be an analog signal and they're going to come here to a board that's going to convert them to a digital signal, which is why I was referencing that they place the, the board that's going to do the analog to digital conversion as close to your analog sensors as possible. So this is a load cell and these are strain gauges. There's four of them. It's very cool. This is a part that you can buy. You can actually buy this as a component. This principle is going to be used in all sorts of digital scales from the large ones that weigh trucks, like semi trucks. I'm not kidding. They use a uh, system very similar to this. And depending on the calibration of your aluminum, which is what this one is made out of, that's going to determine the capacity of the scale. The scale is 8,100 grams. So this is probably rated at what? 10 kilograms, I bet. 10 or 20 kilograms. Very, very neat. Let's see if this comes in so that you guys can see a very good view of those strain gauges. It's just two wires. You can see the strain gauges on there. And how about that analog to digital board at the end? There we go. So that's a load cell. This is the heart of the scale. From here, your load cell is going to communicate over to this board right here. And remember, I said that it's a Wheatstone bridge. So you have four points, one, two, three, four, and they're going to form a diamond in this Wheatstone bridge. Some load cells will only have two points of measurement. This one is a full bridge, just like a full bridge rectifier that you find for uh, AC to DC conversion. This is a full bridge because there's four strain gauges. This is actually very interesting. So you can technically measure these to see with ohms to see if they were close in tolerance. If you have one of these little strain gauges that's got a much larger ohms value than the others, then that's going to be your problem. This is going to be a throwaway part, of course, unless you really want to figure out what that strain gauge is. But getting a match set with the same uh, ohm value is going to be very difficult. So this entire component would be exchanged. Take a look at that. There's a serial number and a part number right there on the end cap. So that is the digital scale. Nothing too fancy. Up here you got your membrane buttons which go to your uh, controller for the membrane buttons and all they do is relay back to your processor. So the processor is doing the comparison of your load cell on the Wheatstone bridge and it's also taking your commands from the uh, membrane buttons. Pretty simple. Nothing major there. So guys, that is a digital scale. I bet you didn't imagine it's something so simple. You have them in your kitchen, you have them in your bathroom, you have them in hospitals, you have them in railroad stations. Digital scales are everywhere and they use a very similar principle. So now you know what makes up a digital scale. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you do and subscribe to the channel because 70% of you guys that are watching these videos are not subscribers and I hope I earned your subscription today. Thanks for watching guys.